Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist here. I've often said that Christians, Muslims, theists should be arguing with each other to decide um, to present a united front against atheists. First, decide which is the true religion and then present your case to atheists. Or at least go and argue with each other um, rather than bothering atheists with all your uh, supernatural claims. So I found this debate on YouTube and we've got a Christian and a Muslim theologians effectively arguing for their religions. And we can't do the whole thing because it goes on for about three hours, but I'm going to pick out some, you know, some sort of interesting clips here and there and comment on them. So this is the first one. This is the Christian who's arguing for his religion. And he's about to say something interesting. So let's let's listen to what he says. It's become this strange dalliance between naturalistic materialism and the presentations that I, I'm encountering all the time. In fact, it seems that the favorite post-Christian, ex-Christian author of many of the Muslims with whom I have dialogue is Bart Ehrman. Now, I don't... Yeah, well, that's not surprising because Bart Ehrman, <clears throat> with all his excellent scholarship, has done a first-rate job of uh, demonstrating that uh, there are all sorts of problems with uh, the New Testament and accepting them as history. He's finding that there's very little reason to accept uh, any of the claims in the New Testament, or at least any of the <clears throat> uh, non-naturalistic claims, the supernatural claims, and he's finding problems all over the place. So it's no wonder that Muslims would turn to an excellent scholar like Bart Ehrman, who is an atheist and also dismisses Islam, because he's done such a wonderful job not debunking uh, the New Testament, but at least demonstrating and explaining how it was compiled and raising severe doubts about whether it really truly is the Word of God. Let's, let's hear what else he's got to say, this chap. I don't think Bart Ehrman even likes that personally, uh, but uh, that kind of naturalistic approach to looking at the New Testament and the Bible we're not, there, there are, there, if, if there are any naturalists here today. Well, I mean, he's saying that Bart Ehrman's way of looking at the Bible is a naturalistic approach. Now, I don't necessarily think that's the case. Uh, he's, taking, he's taking an academic historical approach to it. He's not uh, coming from the position that, you know, the resurrection never happened, the miracles never happened, the, the Immaculate Conception never happened. He's looking at this purely academically and testing it by proper academic historical standards, and he's finding that it comes up short. Uh, you're in the minority. If you're a Christian, you're a supernaturalist. If you're a Muslim, you're a supernaturalist. You should not be starting with the assumption that there cannot be divine revelation. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm absolutely on board with you on that. I never come to any historical, I never come to any religious text and presume and assume this could not have happened. The whole point of religion is that um, there is something more to the uh, natural material world. There is something beyond it. And that is a claim. And I'm not dismissing that claim. I'm not saying it couldn't have happened. I would just like to know why we should believe that uh, those claims are actually true. I think this is one big straw man, which is a cope and a comfort for a lot of Christians out there. Well, atheists have got the burden of proof. Naturalists have got the burden of proof because they're saying it couldn't have happened. No, that's not what we're saying. That's just one big stupid giant straw man. And yet when you start with people like Bart Ehrman and people like that, you're starting with the assumption there is no such thing as divine revelation. And so one of the things that, that I am calling upon I don't think that Bart Ehrman would uh, make that statement and say that there is definitely no such thing as di divine revelation. He just, I don't believe he would say that. He would say that um, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is divine revelation. It's a completely different thing. Upon both Christians and Muslims to do. And, and okay, well, I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to move on to the next clip. But you can see how dishonest these people are. These, this is a Christian arguing against a Muslim, and he's dragging atheists into the argument, even though atheists are not there, skeptics are not there, atheists are not there. He is supposed to be addressing uh, Islamic claims, 
and the Muslim is supposed to be addressing uh, Christian claims and they're supposed to be supporting the claims of their own religion and he is actually attacking uh, what he would call, I don't know, naturalists and secularists, uh, philosophical naturalists. Uh, well, um, we're just coming from the point of view of wanting evidence to support the claims. We're not saying it couldn't have happened. We just want the evidence. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to his next point and see if he's got anything sensible to say. Size the Quran, then we cannot just glibly grab onto the argumentation of liberal orientalists or atheists and skeptics and just throw it out there without even thinking through the fact that they would use the very same type of arguments against the Bible. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so he's presented a good point that as a Christian, he can't take all the good work that is being done by skeptics like Bart Ehrman and uh, using it against the Quran because obviously the same standards would apply to the Bible. Okay, well done. Good point. We can't, as Christians, if we follow him who is the truth, we cannot be using different standards. It doesn't matter how effective, quote-unquote, on a pragmatic level that argument might be. That is not an option for a Christian. And the same way, I have over and over again asked my Muslim friends, do you realize that the argumentation that you're using, if you applied the same standards to the Quran, would disprove the Quran? Okay, the only thing is... I haven't particularly noticed uh, Christians using uh, the arguments of skeptics and atheists against the Quran. Maybe I'm not looking at the right channels. I don't really see Christians um, out there criticizing Islam. It's like they've got some kind of pact. And I don't really see Muslims on the whole criticizing Christianity. It's like, oh, we're all lovely. We all believe in the same God. And, you know, there aren't really too many differences between us. That's nonsense. If Islam is true, Christianity, can, Christianity cannot be. If Christianity is true, Islam is false. There's absolutely no doubt about it. There should be. There's. There are fundamental divides between the two religions. And if Christianity is true, it means that every single Muslim is going to hell. And if uh, Islam is true, then it means that Christians are falsely believing in salvation. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have this cozy alliance of, oh, well, we all believe in the same God and everything's fine. Uh, no, everything's not fine. Okay, uh, we're going to move on <clears throat> and we're going to hear more of what he's got to say. Okay, so now he's moving on to why it's important that there should be this dialogue between Muslims and Christians. And so if in the central documents of the faith, we have a connection between, uh, in, in the Quran, between Islam and Christianity, we must talk. <laughs> we cannot afford to just simply listen to what others tell us about the others. We need to talk with one another. <laughs> How are you going to sort out your differences? <laughs> and that's what we're supposed to be doing today, and that's what we've just begun doing. I believe that the Bible is the Word of God for many reasons, but... I mean, look, there are ir irreconcilable differences between Islam and Christianity. I, yeah, it, it will be fun watching this to, to see how they maybe either tiptoe around each other's beliefs or maybe um, be a bit more aggressive and try to demonstrate the, the falsehood of one over the truth of the other. I, I'm going to have to watch this whole damn thing, which is like three hours Today, in the context of a Christian-Islamic dialogue, I believe that it is so because even the Quran recognizes that God sent it down to Moses, God gave it to Jesus, and that's what we continue to have to this very day. Yes, of course, the Quran accepts that. What it doesn't accept is that Jesus is divine and the path to eternal salvation. Try and reconcile that and try and discuss that. And that's where the focus needs to be. I'm excited about you being here. I'm excited about Imam Musa being here. Thank you very much. God bless. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to split my video. I'm, I'm actually going to do this in several parts because otherwise I'll never get it done. So I'm going to publish um, like, you know, 10 minutes today, part one, part two, because I probably won't be able to do this every day. But if I do a little bit at a time, I'll get through it. Okay, so this is part one. And I will pu publish part two probably uh, tomorrow. Thanks for watching.